Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Friday. Welcome to Tell a Friend Friday. This is the day of the week where we tell our people out there that, you know, or who need a little something. They need a little something in their life. Things aren't working out as planned. Or the other thing is things are working out too good and it's ruining their life. Sometimes that happens or things are working out good and they just feel like, you know what? There's got to be something more than good. There is. Welcome to the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's our daily study of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Ancient books teaching you how to connect the jiva, the spirit soul, with divinity. Still works. Thousands of years later, the method still works. How do you know? Because you experience it. It's a experience-based practice. Welcome to the yoga system. Good morning, Kastuba. Happy Friday. Good morning. Good morning. Who are you going to tell? Who are you going to tell about this today? How are you going to do it? I don't know yet. We'll have well, you, to see. Well, you've got to lead the lead the troops. Well, you know, I take Send the it clip, into post my... the clip, perhaps. I I did do that yesterday. About you, the uh, sage groups. I saw that. I shared it. Thank you, Rogan. Sharing in uh, 2023 means something completely different than it did 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah let's I shared not go that. down that rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> I just like how words today. are just they just create new <laughs> words every every day. It's like there's a new word. Yeah. Um, yesterday, we mentioned that there were some spots available in Maris Sage Group during the show. I heard yeah, the, 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 uh, the, the boards lit up. And before and... the show was over, they were already full. Really? And now <laughs> you got to pay premium to get into Maris Group. <laughs> but um, and other g- groups are filling up, you know, like uh, they're about 68 percent full right now. So uh, th- you know, who's got a good we... group? Chaturatma. Well, let's slow down. So, so, so they're about sixty-eight percent full right now, and uh, so it, it'll it's it's wise to sign up as soon as possible. Don't procrastinate on this. And if you know we get too many too many people, we'll we'll get some more groups started. But uh, best to do it right away. Yeah. yeah. Wisdomofthesages dot com. Go to the sage groups sage group link. Yeah, that's exciting. You got a guitar back there, Raghunath. Is that like? A, did you play that? No, it's a piece of junk. I don't know how oh, it got It's like here. a prop back there. What is it? It's sort of like a prop to make me look a little hardcore and rock and roll. Okay. I don't know why that's <laughs> here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, announcement. Big save a weekend this weekend. Oh, big save. Everybody's coming up. All these Zoomers and others are showing up at the farm today. Starting that's off with fun. Sweet Banjo Mike. Nice. Maybe Banjo Mike can play that guitar for you. Yeah. He can play anything, that guy. He's a renaissance man. Yeah. Um, what do we got for announcements, Miss Mara? We have back to your recovery group meetings today at 12.30 and 1. Josh Kane is offering an asana class for our Patreon members at 10.30 this morning. And we should mention that tomorrow's show, Sleep in Saturday, will be sleep in just a little bit. It'll be at 7 a.m. So we sleep. call it sort of sleep in Saturday. Snooze in Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> You just not cannot hit that snooze button too much. Yeah. 
snooze that is a snooze should just be the maya button not the snooze button <laughs> just like the double snooze Ooh, that's when you're really blowing it it's not like that snooze even helps does it raganath there's limited time today we have many verses to cover okay i know that's why i'm bringing so up these weather. important things Yes. Kustu, but you think all my squirrels are just like you, taking I've, us. To- I've diverted about three so far in this show because I know we have a long way to go. <laughs> Each one of those could have taken us 10 minutes in some direction. That's happening. By the way, show. if you're new to the show, a squirrel is when I start, when you, you know, walking a dog and a, a, a dog ch- gets off the path and chases a squirrel. So whenever I say something that's not according to the agenda, <laughs> guess what? It's life. Sometimes things happen. Life happens. You ever see that T-shirt? Life happens. Um, Squirrel it. Squirrel it. Speaking of nuggets. You snooze, you lose. That's a good one. That is a very good one for a new Wisdom of the Sages T-shirt. Yes, you got a nugget? Yeah, well, I sent it to you. Would you like to read it? Sure. From a very esteemed source. The Buddha himself. Yeah. Everybody says the Buddha. Did the Buddha actually say all these things? Well, this is from the Pragna Paramita Sutra. So they were standing there with like a tape recorder. Uh, the Buddha said this too today. Did you hear that? Well, they did. The Buddha ever say anything like get me a glass of water? Did the Buddha ever say like get me a glass of water? Like things that I weren't don't profound. The significance of that. Okay, here, here's what he said. This is from the Pragya. Paramita Sutra of Gautama Buddha. Okay. Regarding this fleeting world, regard this fleeting world like this. Okay. That, Different that's ways a big to regard statement, it. Statement like the fleeting world. <clears throat> just truthfully, you could just say, regard this fleeting world. Just you could just regard say fleeting world, world. Fleeting. fleeting world. And I would be like, wow, this world <laughs> is fleeting. Okay. Right? That's enough to like. What? Never thought of it like that. Okay, regard this fleeting world like this. Yeah. Like stars fading and vanishing at dawn. Mm. Right? Yeah, like you know, bubbles you know on a fast moving stream. Boop, boop, boop. Like morning dewdrops evaporating on blades of grass. So delicate. Delicate. Like your hands. Thank you. Like a candle flickering in a strong wind. Oh, vulnerable, huh? Vulnerable. Echoes, mirages, Mm. Mm. and phantoms, hallucinations, and like a dream. Let's try to move quick today and cover 19 verses. (laughs) Oh, that was you. I thought that was the Buddha. Because it's so fleeting, the time is so it's passing so quickly. Let's try to move quick today and cover nineteen verses. But you know the story about Buddha Raghunath, right? About like how he was all kind of kept. He was what they call a sheltered child. Yeah, very sheltered. With helicopter parents. He was a prince, right? He was a prince. He was a prince. And they tried to protect him from the outside world, like I try to do to my kids. Mm. But not but as extreme. One day he walked outside the kingdom. You know, he saw the the, the classics. There are he four things he saw. It. It's called the four sights. Do you know about that? The four sights. Never heard of it like that. Yeah. Do you know what he saw? A person suffering with disease. And a diseased person was one of them. Uh, a child giving a child giving birth to a mother. Children generally don't give birth, and I don't think. No, when he saw that, he's like, "What is going (laughs) on here?" No, he first he saw an old man. He had never seen an old man before. Right. I wonder what they did with all the old men in the kingdom. Hid them away. Well, he wasn't just. It wasn't. He wasn't confined to the entire kingdom. He was confined to just like his own little, you know. Oh, really? Okay. Property. Okay. So, so he first he was. It was actually there was like one person that went with him like um you know like one of his drivers in a sense you know right and he took him out they went out on horseback and for the first time in his life he saw an old man so what's this it's like oh this is old age this this will happen to everyone 
Mm. Exactly. And, and they see there was a, pro, a little backstory on this. There was a prophecy from his birth because, you know, the, they do the children's astrological chart in India. And it said this person will be a great renunciate. He'll give up everything. <laughs> he will not be the heir to the throne. And the parents were like, oh, no, we can't Lock let this down. happen. Put him on lockdown. Yeah. Okay. The next thing he saw was a diseased person. He said, what is this? Well, you know, disease, this happens to everyone, too. You know, Everyone? I mean, I mean, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> One of those things. Then he saw a corpse, a human corpse. It's like, Quite this? shocking if you've never seen one. If you didn't know that people... You see, if this, uh, this is kind of like, let's think of this in terms of the chapter that we're reading again, which is just coming on with like this negativity, right? But imagine it, if we had never seen these things before, if we had never seen disease, we'd never seen people suffer, then the whole thing would, well, it would kind of drive us. It would, it would strike us in a different way. And what happened was then, then Buddha saw the fourth sight that, do you know the fourth sight that he saw? Birth, death, disease, death. Wait, he said death. Birth? Did I say birth already? There is no birth. Birth wasn't. There's no birth. They didn't see birth. Okay. He saw an old man. He saw a diseased person. He saw a dead body. And then he saw an ascetic, you know, someone who had devoted themselves to transcending the cause of all this human suffering. Mm -hmm. And he resolved to follow that example. Oh, this Hmm. person, I. I miss this that is one. The I've truth. never heard that one. Yeah, those are the four sites, four events um, that describe described in the legendary account of Gautama Buddha's life, which led to his realization of the impermanence and the ultimate dissatisfaction of material existence. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so, so the idea here is that he he only had one eye. Right. We've been talking about these two eyes. If he was locked away in that little castle. He only had one eye, which he was seeing the world, which is like, oh, the world is safe. The world is good. The world is pleasant. The world is enjoyable. If you're new to the show, we've been using this al- analogy for the last few days. Seeing yeah. things with one eye, you're seeing just what's present in front of you. And seeing with two eyes is, Mr. Kostuba. Well, it, that's what this entire chapter is dedicated. If you really look at our life in this world, there's tons and tons and tons of suffering. <laughs> it could mm. suffer in so many different varieties of ways. So when he got that other eye, it kind of then then we, he got the the depth perception that he needed that to see. Oh, this world is not my home. That, that, but you know, but he 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 didn't become nihilistic oh there's no meaning to all this this is just also you know he he saw there's something beyond this that ascetic inspired him oh there are people that are consciously aware of the suffering in this world they're not trying to blind themselves to it but they also have this understanding this insight you know that there's something beyond this so we can look at this world and see it as like stars fading and vanishing at dawn right something pleasant comes in life i already know it's gonna fade, right? Mm-hmm. Little dewdrops on blades of grass. Oh, look! It's so luminescent and and uh, smooth, and it's got a certain beauty. But I know that it's only there for a few moments, and then, you know, and it's gone, and then it comes back again, and it's gone, and then it's comes. That's the nature of this world, right? Mm. Echoes, you know, reflections of other things that bounce and then disappear. You know, mirages, things that you chase after you finally get there. Poof! It's gone. You know. So you can become that. very, very bitter by 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 be, by analyzing the material world. You can become very, very bitter you because can. It, you can become bitter you, again, at life. You can eye. become bitter at God. Yeah. Um, I I, I heard of a lady anyway. Um, it, it's just easy to get bitter because there's so much intense pain and suffering, yeah. and that's why the two eye vision is a necessity, and to understand the length of our life that seems very long it's actually a blink it's oh, less than a blink of the eye in the oh, big picture of things Rogonath, if you and i go back to like 2000 right say 9 11 all that kind of stuff right yeah i was in i was in a different place with a different partner in a different state in a different house <laughs> With I was I was un, uh, I was it was a completely different world. But it seems like yesterday. 
It seems like a mo I remember it like it was yesterday. And if we add now, if we go, so that's you know that's um, just slightly over twenty years ago. Now, if we jump that far ahead, you and I will be about eighty years old, right? It's like oh we God, not- <laughs> oh my God, I can't <laughs> so believe that. A little, it, you know, that was twenty point. years ago. And twenty years from now, I'm going to be almost eighty. Yeah, I mean that was it was over twenty years ago. You know, like you get 22. this you get this feeling like we're on the home stretch. Well, that's that's our and point. it's not looking bright materially. No, no it's gonna. Get know, it's only a matter before these teeth just start coming out of my mouth. <laughs> okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so so don't so what it's saying don't you know Buddha here is saying um, oh, Sukadev Goswami. You just in, completely in, depressed me, by the way. In the in the that. chapter that Sukadev Goswami is speaking, he's saying, "Look at this. Look at this. Don't ignore this." But understand the positive spiritual alternative. Keep that fixed in your mind as well. And we're going to get there. If we move quickly today, we'll actually maybe even get there to the, the positive side. Where were you during 9 11? I was in Texas. Where were you? Yeah. You know, you know, my mom lives right there. I do, we're going to block and block away, block and a half away. Did she, but she didn't live there then. Yeah, she did. She oh, witnessed she did. Wow. the whole damn thing. Oh, wow. You saved a guy's life. She saved some dragged, dragged him in her building. Wow. He was banging on the door. I couldn't get in. My Sounds mom like saved. And then my mom fell asleep through the whole thing. <laughs> she came out the whole. Yes. Okay. And my kids, my, my nephews and niece went to school right there. They, wow. my, my nephews and nieces witnessed the entire thing. The entire thing. Plane one and plane two. Wow. So anyone who says it's a hoax, it happened. They watched it. I don't think anybody says that it actually didn't happen. Right? No, I think Some people say it. Some about. people say, no, there's conspiracies out there like it never happened. Really? Yeah. It was like a th- 3D image or something. I heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. I tell you that 20 years from now thing, that really, you really stabbed my heart. You don't, you don't know this, but. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. I'm mm-hmm. not going to. Let's go. Let's go. Rainam the Muskitian and Ram Chivan and Rotamum, Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tatu Jayam Madiriat. Before reciting our Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasa the author. Nasta Prayesh Pabadreshu, Nicham Bhagavat Sevaya, Bhagavati Utamas Loki, Bhakti Rabavati Naishtiki. By regular attendance and classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gudaveda Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with a torch set of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. You'll squirrel. never believe what squirrel. came in the mail. Squirrel. squirrel. You see, just like... <laughs> Enter squirrel. You'll never believe what came in the mail yesterday. Even if I tell you, you still won't believe me. Then maybe you shouldn't what? even tell me. Um, a rubber arm. A rubber oh, arm has come in the mail. Because yeah, the tattoo. For my daughter's birthday. It's a it's a practice tattoo arm. So you can practice doing tattoos on a rubber arm. Amazing. It's all happening. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> okay. A text 20. Sukadeva Swami continued speaking to Maharaj Prickett. Okay. My dear king. Yeah. Oh, here we go. It's going to start. This is, see, this is me talking here, criticizing sleep. <laughs> My dear king, sleep is exactly like a python. Hmm. Mm? Those who wander in the forest of material life are always devoured by the python of sleep. Massive amount of our time. Huh? Tons of our time. It it, it is. Being bitten by this python, they always remain in the darkness of ignorance. They are like dead bodies thrown in a distant forest. Thus, the conditioned souls cannot understand what is going on in life you see you know this is so harry krishna 1.0 we hate sleep now harry krishna <laughs> you know sleep. is like sleep is good embrace sleep sleep in a little don't care sleep's but, important um, but uh 
you know, the point is, Rona, if if you said the 20 year thing just blew your mind, right? It blew my mind, yeah. But how many hours do you sleep a day? You don't have to tell me about sleep, man. I get this. I get this one. I've been studying. I've been meditating on this since I was 17 I'm years old. I'm trying to tell you. We have a you're trying to, to a larger you're trying to tell right me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I've been meditating on this since I was 17 years old. I did a whole okay. experiment. I told you this of trying to cut out my sleep and minimize it when I was in my first year, my first year in college, my only year in college. I understood that if we're sleeping eight hours, that's a third of our day. A third of our life. There you go. So, that so I would try years, to minimize it. I'd sleep 20. one day, eight hours. Then for four days, I'd sleep six hours. Then I reduced it to two hours, and one day I'd step all night. That's crazy. It was crazy, but I felt like like and I but I calculated like how much time I'm gonna give myself. Yeah, but that time, if you're not rested, it's. It seems like you are Harry <laughs> two point my friend. My my point is this. Is that it? Say someone sleeps eight hours a day and they only have twenty years left to live. Well, you just knock those twenty years down to like fourteen years, basically. I know, right? You know. So this you get less it. time. You got less time. Got to use this time well. Okay, let's can't keep buy it back. Speaking of time, text. 21. Speaking of time, Kastuba. <laughs> Thus, the conditioned souls cannot understand well, what is. Wait. They are dead. They are like dead bodies thrown into a distant forest. Mm. Right, being bitten by this python, they always remain in that darkness of ignorance. They are like dead bodies thrown in a distant forest. Thus, the conditioned souls cannot understand what is going on in life. In the forest of material world, the conditioned soul is sometimes bitten by envious enemies. Oh, <laughs> been there, Ouch. been bit, which are compared to serpents and other creatures that bite. Through the tricks of the enemy, the conditioned soul falls from his prestigious position. There's always people trying to take you down, right? That's right. Even Kostuba has a couple nemesis out there. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't like dislike anybody. But there's people, there's a few people out there like, I want to take this guy take me down. down. Who does he think he is? <laughs> That's okay. The, the sadhu... Uh, loves everybody. Even those who hate his guts, the sadhu loves them. But not everybody loves the sadhu. Hmm? True. What's the word for that, Mara? Friend to all. Ooh, I got her today. I got her. <laughs> eh, close. Eh, no, no. I'm thinking Ajata of Mara Judistir. Ajata, Ajata no Shatru. Enemies. No enemies. One of, okay, whatever. No, he, that's that's friend Ooh. of the fallen, right? Dina Ooh. Bandu. Ajata Satra means the one who has no enemies. No, Dina Bandu, she said. Oh, Dina Bandu, yeah. Friend okay. All right, the in, tricks it, of the enemy, Rogana. The tricks of the enemy, the tricks of the enemies, which are compared to serpents and other creatures. The, through the tricks of the enemy, the conditioned soul falls from his prestigious position. Being anxious, he cannot even sleep properly. I, I've been there. What, people have hated on you and you can't yeah, even sleep? Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Really? Oh, tossing yeah. and turning my nemesis yeah and then you and you fall asleep really late and then i would wake up in the middle of the night like after like an hour and a half of sleep and instantly the whole thing would be right on my mind again like that's horrible and, oh man it's you're like choking a pillow trying to take me down it wasn't me was it <laughs> no it wasn't you Rock-a-nos. <laughs> tossing and turning no Rock-a-nos. you're okay. my friend okay good i like you <laughs> I do like you too. I like you. He thus Being becomes. Ancient. I'm Being happy ancient. we're friends still. Yeah, it's hard somehow. to have friends for a long term. What yeah. do you mean somehow? It was easy. No, but it, it's a, it's hard for people to maintain friendships over long periods of time. Well, not for me. I like you. No, it I'm be not hard saying, for you. I'm just saying. After all this time, I wouldn't like me so much if I were you. I'd be like, uh, <laughs> come on, whatever. let's finish this first. <laughs> Being Through anxious. the tricks of the enemy, the conditioned soul falls from his prestigious position. Being anxious, he cannot even sleep properly. Yeah. He thus becomes more and more unhappy and gradually loses his intelligence and consciousness. Mm-hmm. Right. In that state, right, because we're talking about a conditioned soul. So the conditioned soul, if you have a nemesis, right, an, an, an enemy, someone's out to take you down, you aren't a jata shot true. You aren't a friend to all. You actually start to think like, I want revenge. 
I want to how dare he think of me? He doesn't even know me. He didn't know my intentions. Wait till I tell the world about him. What about his problems? Yeah. Here's a list of his problems, everyone. Yeah, that. Yes, that is miserable. In that state, he becomes almost perpetually like a blind man who has fallen into a dark well of ignorance. Down there, just nobody can help you. Enter Jesus Christ. Love your enemies. Boom. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Simple, but to the point. Yeah. The conditioned soul is sometimes attracted to the little happiness derived from sense gratification. Oh, it keeps you going. Isn't that interesting? It's just a little. Yeah. It's, you yeah, think it's so a lot? Little. It's just a little. You like to eat? How much can you eat? Okay. And that, and that, and that um, enjoyment that we get through our senses, that ceiling gets lower and lower as we get older. I can't even, even Mara's the best cook ever. Mara is the best cook ever. And it's like, I can only eat so much. <laughs> it's, it, well, you know, where this is about to go is going to go into sex, right? Same thing. And, and the, I tell you, Ragnar, you know, I was hearing these statistics. <laughs> I, won't, I won't give any analogies. <laughs> no, I was hearing these statistics, Ragnar. Go ahead. The, the, go ahead. the world that we live in nowadays, right? Yes. It's, it's, it's making, especially for men, it's making them think if I'm not having sex with lots of beautiful girls, I'm just a loser. I'm nowhere. I'm getting Yeah, you know, I know. Everybody else has got it. I don't have it. There's pornography. There's movies. It, it's, it's, got, it's got them thinking, you know, I, I got to. But the, the fact is, there's some statistic. I, w I should go back and find it exactly. Find like, statistic. What is, what's the gist of it? The gist of it is like the average man the like American man, like, like between the ages of like 25 and 30 or something like that. Yes. They haven't had sex in like over a year or more. It's it's like, in other words, they're thinking about it all the time. They're being told that that's the goal <laughs> and they're hardly finding it. You know? <laughs> it's not like they're even married, you know? So it's like, you don't have a married partner, you know? Right. They're going, we don't, we're talking about those apps. They're going on the apps and, and, and they're, they're swiping this way and that way and nobody's swiping their way no you know yeah so, so they're just so they're thinking that life is worth this way life is you know there's there's something out there in life for me there's this mirage of like sexual enjoyment that they think i'm going to get there i'm going to get there they're not getting there you're not getting there <laughs> you know you're not and getting so, there so like it's saying here the conditioned soul is sometimes attracted to the little happiness little bit they might find you yeah. know there's this great analogy we, we shared it some time back Radnath Swami was saying, it's like this material life is like a cage that we're trapped in, but the door is open. But we're facing you, the wrong direction. But they put just a little bit of food in the cage <laughs> and we won't walk out because we're like, oh, I need that food, right? That food is Even so if it's good. just a little bit, you know? Yeah. So a little bit of farmer's sex, markets yeah. right outside that cage. Yeah. But you're settling for this. We deserve cake, but we settle for crumbs. Mm, yeah. Hmm? Okay, so all right, let's keep it rolling. Add such keep thus he is go, uh, text twenty two. Uh, thus, uh, 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 thus, okay. The conditions all sometimes attracted to the little happiness derived from sense gratification. Thus, he has illicit sex or steals another's property. Mm. I always, I always dream about stealing property. It's stupid okay. things like a, there's a pile of gravel. I was like, oh, we need gravel. I wonder if that guy in the truck over here. <laughs> That's what I want to steal. I want to steal like gravel. Uh, Yesterday, I, he had a. <laughs> sometimes I think about stealing saplings, like young trees. I was like, oh, they don't want that tree. But yeah, this is me here. I'm a materialist looking at trees to steal and gravel. Thus, he has illicit sex and steals another's property, even their gravel. At such a time, he may be arrested by the government or chastised by the woman's husband or protector. People get in legal troubles all the time. All the time. So many, so many things. You get caught with another, you get caught with your lover by Cheating. their spouse. There's TV shows on that. Cheaters. Have you ever <laughs> seen that? There's television shows about that. <laughs> There's television shows. <laughs> What was that? The very first of the real lowbrow TV shows were like, this is a couple. They've been together for 20 years and we're going to bring on a special guest. 
It's your lover. Did you know he had a lover? What was that show called? Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. Okay. Thus. Thus, simply for a little material satisfaction, he falls into a hellish condition. Right? You don't believe in hell? We created every day on this planet. Hell on earth. He falls into a hellish condition and is put into jail for rape, kidnapping, theft, and so oh, forth. You, you know, we're going to have to ever see those clips of those shows that are like where they find these predators, you know, these like child pedophiles. Oh, God. Oh, God. I mean, it's just like these guys, you know, like they're they're, they're This is that this is. These you know guys, what? Right? Men are Suffering horrible. So intensely. I hate men. No, Can no, I just no, say no, that right no. now? I don't no, like no, men. no, no. You the men care, animal is a disgusting recipe. <laughs> wrong. Wrong. No. <laughs> Come on. Men are gross. You know that. You know that. hate on <laughs> But my point being is just that they're they're They don't want to be like that. But there they are chasing this mirage of material. set. It's so stupid. Like so as ridiculous. if they're possessed. As if and then they possessed. suffer so intensely from it. Right. So we it's not that everybody's like that, but to some degree, we're like that when we're chasing material enjoyment. You know, we're thinking it's there. We embarrass ourselves. We we humiliate ourselves. We incriminate. I mean, how ourselves. much is our desire? I mean, I can think back in life when my desire for sex humiliated me. Is that don't go into too much information. No here. detail. No detail here. <laughs> Hold it right there. Let's read the next text. <laughs> Hare Krishna. I saved you right Hare there. Hare Krishna. Right you would have regretted it. I love went. using Harry Krishna to sort of like shake the etch sketch clear, clear, clear the slate. The, Harry yeah. Krishna. <laughs> clear the ether. Okay. Text 23. Text 23. Learned scholars and transcendentalists yeah. therefore condemn the materialistic path of fruitive activities because it is the original source and breeding ground of material miseries, okay. right? Not because God is trying to punish you. No, you're not allowed to have fun in this world. It is the cause of your pain. right? Right? Mm -hmm. Those who are intelligent do not take part in the sources of misery, which are due to coming into contact with material senses. The so not the pleasures. They don't even call them. The Gita is not even calling them pleasures. They're calling them the sources, sources of, of misery. misery. Right. Why? Because such so-called pleasures have a beginning and an end. They're fleeting. It's over. And now what? Now ever do this? What have I done? What was I, th I thinking? And with it comes a whole level of self-loathing. Right. No one feels good about themselves after intense type of indulgence right self there's this lack of feeling of self-worth when you indulge yourself and people suffer i mean it's epidemic this self-loathing that people even young kids they suffer from you won't feel good about yourself if you're addicted to anything even your phone you'll feel like what am i doing with my life mm -hmm. any type of addictive behavior will make you feel worthless we get our worth from our worthy activities. We don't get our worth just from, uh, you know, purchasing things or being successful. That's not going to give us worth. Worth comes from doing worthy things in this world. When we do addictive things, tamasic things, we f we start to hate ourselves. Gotcha. Noted. Gotcha? Noted. Want to be happy? Don't do those things. Okay. That was a great verse. Stealing or cheating another person out of his money, the conditioned soul somehow or other keeps it in his possession and escapes punishment. Oh, then another sly. man named, what's that? Very sly. Sly, sly dog. <laughs> then another man named David Dutta cheats him and takes away his money. What do they mean by that, David Dutta? I'm not sure. <laughs> Just some random guy named David Dutta takes his money. <laughs> Person, well, when you look at the translation, it says person named David Dutta. Okay. Dutta, what does Dutta mean? I don't know. Dutta, David. David Dutta. Then another man named David Dutta cheats him and takes his money away. Similarly, another man named Vish, Vishnu Mitra steals the money from David Dutta and takes that away. Yeah, it's yeah. really just... It, cheater in cheater. any case, the money does not stay in one place. 
it passes oh. from one hand to another. Ultimately, no one can enjoy the money and it remains the property of the supreme personality of Godhead. It's just moving <laughs> around. It's just moving around. They say that wealth is chanchala, right, Raghunath? It's like... Uh, yeah, it's a name for Lakshmi, chanchal, chanchal. It moving means just, here, it flickers. There. It comes and it goes. Like a karma chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, keep moving. It comes and goes. <laughs> I want to hang out with boy George. Yeah. I'm going to be his friend. I think he'd like me. Uh, you'd be best friends. I think so. Being unable to protect himself from the threefold miseries of material existence, the conditioned soul becomes very morose and lives a life of lamentation. It happens to That's so what many I was saying. Us. That lack of self-worth. The th these threefold miseries are the miseries suffered by mental calamity boom, at the hands of the demigods. Wait a second. Such the threefold miseries wind, yeah. are suffered by mental calamity at the hands of the demigods, such as freezing wind, scorching heat. The miseries offered by other living entities, right? It's like uh, Mara hurts my feelings or, you know, or, or you know. You step on some, his tail. Step on, yeah, or the dog bites me or something like that. That's an other, another jiva causing me pain, either mentally or physically, right? And then yeah. there's miseries arriving, arriving, arising from the mind and the body themselves. Yeah. Right. So I can, I can get like a stomach bug. That's a misery. Yeah. There's the weather. That's a misery. And then there's other jivas causing me misery. Threefold miseries. Threefold miseries. It's a 108 record. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Being unable to protect himself in the threefold oh, misery material. Right. Okay. Being that's unable it. to protect himself, X25, from the what threefold that's misery. That's what we just read. We're at that's what we just read. That's what I meant. 26. Mm -hmm. As far as transactions with money are concerned, if one it's person cheats so another, yeah, one cheats another by a farthing or less. I love that word, farthing. <laughs> You take one farthing in a year through. <laughs> Dickensian. What's that? It's like Dickens. Okay. Oh, it's Dickensian. Well, thank you. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh. Dickensian. It's a Dickensian. You, would like Dickensian one. you were saying you're so into it. I'm trying to share a little. <laughs> he said Dickensian. <laughs> You've been waiting for episodes to say that. <laughs> okay. As far as transactions with money are concerned, if one person cheats another by a farthing or less, they become enemies. And perhaps a pence, a penny, a hay penny. <laughs> a pence. A ruble. True. People become In enemies this... over a little thing like that. Over a thousand lira. Uh, over a thousand lira. Yeah. In this materialistic life, there are many difficulties. As I just mentioned, and all of these are insurmountable. In addition, there are difficulties arising from so-called happiness, distress, attachment, hate, fear, false prestige, illusion, madness, lamentation, bewilderment, greed, envy, enmity, insult. Insult hurts. <laughs> That's the one that hurts you the most. We just heard about 20 of them. You stopped right on that. One. I stopped right on insult. <laughs> I got a big ego. <laughs> What else? H hunger. Hunger hurts. Mm -hmm. Then that's when I get hangry. <laughs> that's right. We that's had a few a, shows where you're hangry. That's such all the time. a good word, isn't it? Hangry. <laughs> Maybe that's Burst. why you were yelling at Mara the other day. Mara, was he hangry at the time? Was I hangry? I don't think I was hangry. Okay. I was kid frustrated. Right. Um, hangry. Thirst. 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 Do I ever get angry out of thirst? I don't think so. I don't even drink water. Tribulation. I just dehydrate. Tribulation. Tribulation I can relate to. Disease. It's coming, Ragu. Birth. It's coming, Ragu. Old age. It's coming, Ragu. And death. Coming around the mountains. <laughs> it is. It is. All these combine together to give the materialistic conditioned soul nothing but misery. More. Let's hear more. Text 28. Want to hear more misery? I got more for you. Okay. Text 28. 
Sometimes a conditioned soul is attracted. And remember, if you're new to the show, we're just analyzing the material world. The good news is there's a spiritual realm. And that's what we're that's why we're here. We're not, otherwise, otherwise, the whole idea of positive mental attitude is to sweep all this stuff under the rug. Hmm. Right? I don't care how positive you are, disease and death are just around the corner. So we're saying see yourself as something different than matter. That's what the Vedas keep teaching us. See yourself as something different than matter. There's a much better return on investment here. Sometimes the conditioned soul is attracted by illusion, personified. Wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband. Illusion personified. Keep reading. <laughs> and becomes eager to be embraced by a woman or a man. Thus, he loses his intelligence as well as life's as well as knowledge or life's goal. Well, is there are you saying there's it, it the, seems like the great can't embrace if you I can't, can't embrace, embrace what's, what's wrong with embracing a person? That's stupid. Yeah. What's wrong with embracing a person? No, the point is, is we, we lose touch, you know. And ultimately, that embrace, it doesn't satisfy us in the long run. You know? It does that satisfy. Poof, poof. You've never experienced love. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The idea is that they're not your God. They're not your God. Okay. They can be crutches to help you. Walk. Crutches are good. You got a broken leg, you use a crutch. But if I continually use the crutch and never let the leg heal, right? Then you're just going to create some weird, awkward walking thing your whole life. Crutches are good. And you can have your partner sort of as a crush to lean into. Lean on me, Kostuba. I'm here for you. I'll be your crutch. Walk on me if you need. <laughs> you know, I'll hold your hand. You want to cross the street? You're a little scared? I'll help you. I'll cross the street with you. But eventually, we got to walk on our own. That's the idea here. Okay. So it's not like embracing is evil. It's just like you got to understand this isn't this person you're embracing is not going to ultimately save you. Okay. At that time. At that time. At that time. What text are we on, please? Same one, 28. 28. Um, at that time, no longer attempting spiritual cultivation, he becomes overly attached to their partner. Husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, and tries to provide them with su a suitable place to live. Mm -hmm. Again, they become very busy under the shelter of home and is captivated by the talks and glances of their attractive partner and their attractive little children. In this way, they lose their God consciousness or Krishna consciousness, and they throw themselves into the dense darkness of material existence. Mm -hmm. Okay, once again, this is sounding like what is wrong with having a pious, good family? Nothing's wrong with it, except be careful. It's all impermanent. Don't take don't take shelter of it as your God. Use them to walk towards God. And bring them towards God, right? Like just like friendship, real friends. I was having a nice conversation with somebody yesterday saying a real friend is not going to drag me down. I shouldn't say, oh, when I see Kostu, it's like we're going to go out. We're going to, you know, get wasted together. You're trying to drag like me that. down. Yeah, yeah. I should look at Kostuba like I want to rise high. And he should look at me as like I want to hang out with Ragu because whenever I hang out with Ragu, he he lifts me higher. That's friendship. And if I have some issue, I don't want to contaminate Kostuba with my issue. I can confide in him. Hey, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me with this? But I don't want to take him down to some lower level. That's not friendship. That is pulling people down. We want to lift people up. Same with our family members, our partners, our spouse. We want a relationship which is all about lifting people higher. Okay. Higher and higher, baby. Bam, bam. Text, Text 29. 29. I think I've sang that song many times, and I don't even know what that song is. <laughs> Have you noticed I only know clips of songs? I'm taking note of that, Raga. The personal weapon used by Lord Krishna, the disc, is called the Hari Chakra, the disc of Hari. The chakra is the wheel of time. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. 
It expands from the beginning of the atoms up to the time of Brahma's death. Even Lord Brahma dies. And it controls all activities. It is always revolving and spending the lives of the living and spending the lives of the living entities from Lord Brahma down to the insignificant blade of grass. Yep. Thus, one changes from infancy. It seems like the Bhagavatam is recommended recommending mowing here. Thus, one changes from infancy to childhood, to youth, to maturity, and thus one approaches the end of life. It is impossible to check this wheel of time. Are you sure? Because I take a lot of superfoods and longevity herbs. The wheel is very exacting because it is the personal weapon of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sometimes the conditioned soul, fearing the approach of death, wants to worship someone who can save him from imminent danger. Help. Yet he does not care for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Right? They'll worship anybody but the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The one who's holding that that wheel that's spinning. Yeah. Whose weapon, spinning wheel round and round, whose weapon is the indef indefatigable time factor. Oof. It doesn't get tired. It just keeps keeps going. Keeps spinning. The conditioned soul instead takes shelter of a man-made God described in unauthorized scriptures, described in unauthorized scriptures, a man-made God. That's what we've created, man-made gods. The conditions, oh God. Such, Such gods are like buzzards. You don't hear that word that much anymore, a buzzard. Such gods are like vultures, right? Isn't a buzzard a vulture, Mara? Apparently there's a difference. Okay, such God, Google that, please. Such gods are like buzzards, vultures, herons, and crows. I thought herons were nice. I think they're uh, all. I'm a heron, yeah, but it, it would seem like they're talking about um, what do you call buzzards them? and vultures eat dead bodies. Yeah, that's the point. Crows, crows eat anything, yeah. and herons eat fish. Here's the difference. Buzzards are smaller than vultures, and they prefer to hunt, attack, and eat their prey while the creatures are somewhat alive. Oh. So they don't eat as much dead bodies as vultures. Interesting. A buzzard. Well, I think all birds, they eat their... If they're, if they're birds of prey, they eat it alive, right? They don't kill them first. They... No, I mean, like... Take it versus some... eating dead animals, you know, like stuff that's already been killed. But like are there any birds that animals. kill the thing first and then eat it? I guess they some some of those birds lift things high up in the air and drop them, don't they? Yeah, I think yeah. So. Okay, but we let's keep moving. I'm squirrel. You got me squirrel. Like I that. like this squirrel. <laughs> Hunting birds. Vedic scriptures do not fear. Ref, all right, okay. Let's let's Crows, zip this back. Herons. The conditioned soul instead takes shelter of a man-made god described in unauthorized scriptures. Such gods gods are like buzzards, vultures, herons, and crows. Vedic scriptures do not refer to them. Imminent death is like the attack of a lion. And neither vultures, buzzards, crows, nor herons can save one from such an attack. Interesting. One who takes shelter of unauthorized man-made gods cannot be saved from the clutches of death. Now, Ooh. this he gets heavier here. This is going to get heavy. important text 30. The pseudo swamis. Ouch. I wonder if some people call me a pseudo swami. The pseudo swamis, yogis. I wonder if people call me a pseudo yogi. The pseudo swamis and yogis and incarnations who do not believe in the supreme personality of Godhead. There's a lot of people out there like that, right? Mm -hmm. Are known as Pashandis. That's like a Vedic put down. You Pashandi. They themselves are fallen and cheated because they do not know the real path of spiritual advancement. And whoever goes to them is certainly cheated in his turn you know what? The, the the point is you know a lot of us get into eastern thought because we see oh it's more inclusive it's not this super dogmatic thing where we're right and everybody's wrong mm. but we also shouldn't become so open-minded that our critical thinking falls out <laughs> no critical <laughs> thinking is a necessity yeah or else yeah. i'll just accept it's anybody you got a robe on you got a beard you're my yeah. guru Silly. Okay. 
you know, I've I've heard people criticize, uh, oh, you're a white male guru. What has that got to do anything? What does a person being white have to do with a person can transmit Vedic knowledge or a male or a woman or any, right? If you can transmit Vedic knowledge, that's the qualification. That's it. It's not on a bodily platform, people. Come on. Okay, let's finish this text for today. Okay. When one is thus cheated. When one is thus cheated. Mara, where are we? They when one is thus cheated, takes... he sometimes takes shelter of the uh, of of the real followers of Vedic principles, Brahmanas or those in Krishna consciousness who teach everyone how to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead according to the Vedic rituals. However, being unable to stick to these principles, these rascals again fall down and take shelter among sudras who are very expert in making arrangements for sex indulgence, which you know keeps you the bodily uh, bodily intelligence. Sex is very prominent amongst the animals like monkeys. And such people who are enlivened by sex may be called the descendants of monkeys. And they're following <laughs> in the path of the monkeys. In this way, the descendants of the monkeys intermingle with each other, and they are generally known as sudras. Without hesitating, they live and move freely, not knowing the real goal of life. They are captivated simply by seeing the faces of one another, which remind them of sense gratification. Ah, oh, he's cute. She's beautiful. She's sexy. He's hot. Right? Yeah. This is sort of like the 60s hippies. Actually, it's like now. It's like Tinder. And... It's going on all along. Yeah. They are always engaged in the material activities known as Gramya Karma. And they work hard for material benefit. Thus, they forget completely that one day their small life spans will be finished and they'll become degraded in the ev in the evolutionary cycle. Right? They won't evolve into a next body. They'll just go lower. Okay, one you more practice monkey. low activities, right? Make stupid choices, get stupid rewards. Just as a monkey jumps from one tree to another, the conditioned soul jumps from one body to another. As the monkey is ultimately captured by the hunter and is unable to get out of captivity, the conditioned soul being captivated by momentary sex pleasure becomes attached to different types of bodies and is encaged in that family life. Heavy statements. Family life affords the conditioned soul a festival. Oh, this is good. A festival of momentary pleasure. And thus he complete and is completely unable to get out of the material clutches. Just a little bit of food in that cage. Just a little it's bit. It's worth it being encaged. In this material world, when the conditioned soul forgets its relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead uh, and does not care for Krishna consciousness, he simply engages in different types of mischievous and sinful activities. He is then subjected to those threefold miseries. And out of fear of the elephant of death, he falls into the darkness found in a mountain cave. The conditioned soul suffers many miserable bodily conditions. What a way to go, falling into a cave. <laughs> I think we're out of time. For that. Oh, we are. Sorry, you wanted me to push through these. We, yeah, you, you know what? You got to talk about these things. Yes, you do. You we know, don't have to talk about everything that we've been talking about. No, but those are very interesting. <laughs> okay. Even those are now a great one. Falling into a mountain cave. How do you help a person who's fallen into a mountain cave? If you don't, first of all, you don't even know he's gone. They just like, it's as if they disappear. <clears throat> Okay, Maris had enough of me today. <laughs> takeaways. You got takeaways, Mara? I do. I got some good stuff. Don't fall into a mountain cave. What's for uh, dinner tonight? Uh, as as for the um. We're doing a potluck this evening. Oh, well, hold it. What's this potluck, Mara? <laughs> it's a table weekend. We're doing potluck, but Mara's cooking tomorrow. I oh, am. What's, what what's on the menu for tomorrow? I think I'm gonna do burritos tomorrow night for dinner. Mara, yeah. Oh, I love your burritos. <laughs> oh, that's why I'm doing them. <laughs> And I'm doing some cookies for the film premiere, Thomas Hicks film premiere also. Oh, yeah, we're doing the film premiere Saturday night. Uh, nice. Something divine. We're all excited about it. All right. Back to our takeaways. 
The world is fleeting and not my home. Okay. What? Understand the positive spiritual opportunity in the suffering of the world. Yep. The sadhu loves everyone. I love you. You can't hear you, Raga. I love you. <laughs> we deserve cake, but we settle for crumbs. I like that one. Our cage door is wide open. It's wide open, Rona. Just fly right through it. I'm going to stay in the cage. Sort of, <laughs> sort of fun in here. Burritos in there. <laughs> oh, I got to line up the song, too. We humiliate ourselves searching for sense gratification. Oh, yeah. It's humiliating. Humiliating. Self-loathing. Yeah. What have I done? That's a horrible mantra to chant. Uh, intense indulgence leads to self-loathing. Mm -hmm. Don't be a loather. Don't be a loather. <laughs> wealth is flickering. Health is wealth. Health is flickering, too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Um, real friendship is uplifting others. Yeah. Be a friend. Friend. Make stupid choices, get stupid rewards. I like that one. And. And. Life happens, squirrel it. Life happens. Squirrel it. Squirrel it. Because <laughs> she was like, I 100% disagree with that statement. Squirrel it. I don't. Oh, happens, getting squirrel. ready for the Seva extravaganza. Me and the chief, me and Jeff Eisenberg. Is there any music? We can't hear the music. You can't hear the music? Uh oh. It sounded so good from here. There we go. Oh, getting ready for the Seva retreat weekend. Me and Jeff Eisenberg and Chief Pags. All three of us rolling down a hill laughing together. You're going to use that nice deck that Jeff built? We're going to use that deck. Go up on that deck and we're gonna woo, throw each other in the pond. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a little log fight. Me and Jeff Eisenberg do a little judo throws off the log. <laughs> gonna grab Lori Pag by the ankles and by the hands, swing her off the log. Woo! 